If we are going to be incredible, we need to demonstrate our faith in God. If we're going to be incredible, we have to demonstrate our faith in God. We have to demonstrate it more so than our fear. And that certainly was evident in the life of Abraham. Again, it wasn't that he didn't have any fear. It's that he learned how to overcome fear with faith. And God continued to allow him to wrestle through those things. But he had a right mindset. He had a right way of thinking. Again, what I said earlier, faith is that word that we use to sum up a person's beliefs or the way that they're thinking about God. And how do we know how a person's thinking about God? By the way they speak about him or by the way that they act towards him or for him. That's how we know. Romans chapter 8, 28 says this, and we know, we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. But what if we don't? What if you don't know that? How is God going to get you or I to know that it is going to work out together for good? I'll tell you how he's going to do it. He's going to pull our butts into something that's unpleasant. And we're thinking that the whole world is going to crash down around us. And we're freaking out with fear. And then all of a sudden he saves the day again. And what do we do? We're like, ah, ah, awesome. God's amazing. And our faith increases and our fear decreases, right? And so he takes us into that stuff on purpose. Why? He's testing our faith. He wants it to grow. He wants to decrease fear. And all for the point of helping us to understand. Listen, everything works out together for the good of those who love me. I will prove it to you. But he's got to take you through some crap in order to prove it. That was the first thing. Here's the second thing. Number two, fear leads to failed tests. It does. And we all have it, and we've all failed some pretty serious faith tests along the way. Abraham did twice with Sarah. There was multiple instances, too. I just didn't mention them. He failed at times, but you know what? God's totally okay with that. Like I said earlier, good teachers know where their students are at, and they don't give up on them. They'll just keep giving them the same test over and over and over again until they get it. And that's what God does. So he's not bummed out. He's not freaking out whenever you and I fail a test. He's just like, hey, listen... I'm committed to this thing called sanctification. It's a process of cleaning you up and setting you apart for special use. And I got all day. That's the way God looks at it. I will wait you out. And so if you want to take this test over again, boy, howdy, I'll let you do it. But you're going to take this test again until you pass it. And I'm going to keep training you to pass it over and over and over again. Here's the third thing. God knows exactly how to test and train us. He knows exactly how. God knew Abraham, and therefore he knew exactly what would be the right way to test the faith of a man who had been experiencing God's power and providence between 40 and 100 plus years. I don't think I'm at the same level of Abraham. Maybe you are. But God tests my faith differently because it's at a different level. And God knows exactly how to test and train me. And I think that he knows exactly how to do that with you. And here's why. He's obsessed with you. He is obsessed with me. He loves you. He knows you. And therefore, he knows exactly how to test you. And he knows how to test me. And the reason why he's doing it is because he wants us to be incredible. And what do followers do when they're incredible? I'll tell you what they do. They help other people find and follow Jesus.